Welcome. In this video, we're going to continue on with our infrastructure as code discussion. In particular, I developed a platform that you can use to deploy your Laravel applications from a Git repo. In this video, we're going to look at the provisioning aspects of that platform. I shared a link to the repo in the description below. This video will have two parts. The first part will be a show and tell, and we're going to go through just how easy it is to use the provisioning scripts inside that platform. And then the second part, we're going to deep dive into the code. So stick around. The first thing is let's SSH back into our instance and we're just going to run this command again. Next thing is I want to switch into that directory. So if you remember in the CloudFormation JSON file in the EC2 instance, we define user data and that git clone that DevOps repo into this directory for us. So now we have access to all these scripts. So our next task is to provision Ubuntu with everything it needs, like uh, you know Nginx and PHP and all of the other things. To do that, we are simply going to run this provision Ubuntu script. So I'm going to run this first, and then we can do a code review in, in a little bit. Um, but I made this script so that it's pretty much hands off, and you're going to see a lot of information scroll and pass. I'm probably going to fast forward through this, um, but I'll try to highlight some stuff as we go. And I made the script so it's as prompt free as we can. So hopefully we'll see how many prompts that we get. And so as it's going, you can see here at the very top, you know, as I ran that script, it started to update the packages. It's doing an upgrade. I had, I have actually already run this once. So you're going to see a lot of these packages are probably already here. Um, so like it's already at this latest version. Installing basic packages. There's a bunch of basic packages that we're installing. Here's where we're installing Nginx. And again, because I've already run this, it's already at its latest version. Here's PHP 8.3 with all of the uh, modules that we're going to need. So the MySQL, ODBC, Opcache, all the modules. Installing Composer, installing Node and NPM, Redis, SQLite, MySQL, and the cert bot that Let's Encrypt is going to use does one last upgrade check. It does some cleanup of any old, you know, distros that it just doesn't need anymore. And I will, we'll take a moment here to talk about this, this swap space for these T2 micro instances. I found out when, you know, you were doing NPM installs, you just ran out of RAM and the instance would just come to a halt. And so adding this swap space really helped prevent, you know, some of those freezes where an SSH would just not respond anymore. And then finally, we get the status report. Here's the status report. We have an Nginx version uh, with the PHP version, the Composer version, Node, NPM, Redis. So we can see everything that it installed. So that's it. So the Ubuntu instance is fully provisioned. I ran one line of code and everything else was done for me. That is the power of having infrastructure as code. You build the time to build up that code base so that then you can rerun that over and over again and easily deploy or you know create new instances. Next thing we're going to do a quick code review for that provisioning code that we just saw run. So under the provision directory, there are two um, things. There's a provision script, which is the one that you saw me run. And then there is also a list of installers, which is a bunch of other shell scripts that we kind of use this to compose up our what we need for provisioning. If you watched the previous video on how we did this manually, there shouldn't be a lot of surprises in this script file. So for example, the last time you saw me run sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade dash y. And the only difference now is it's all in one script. So we ran this one script and everything that we ran before just automatically ran for us. So at a high level, we can see, again, we did the upgrades here. Here we installed some basic Ubuntu packages like zip, uh, unzip, curl. Here you can see we're installing Nginx. And if we take a look at that, we're just using a different source file. So here we're actually using these to compose. So Nginx is these commands. Those are the same commands I ran manually. Here we're installing PHP. There is a variable here, the PHP underscore version, which I'll point out here in the config file. So in the upper level, there's a config file that has two variables in there. There's a PHP version and a, a DB root password. And so we're locked in at 8.3 right now. And I just put secret in for the password, put whatever you want in there. 
And then so now you can see I'm a column, a PHP 8.3.sh, which is this one right here. And these are all the commands that I ran the last time manually. So we added the repository, uh, we did an update after that, and then eventually we started doing the install of PHP and also the FPM, and in addition, all of the modules that we're gonna need for PHP. At the very bottom, I back up some of these files, the PHP INI files and the, the Xdebug and Opcache files. I back them up because we're making some small tweaks to them using um, the SED sed command. Some of this is commented out, but you may want to uncomment it depending on your needs. Like for example, the CLI, if you need extra memory or you know, if maybe it's a development environment that you're really provisioning, you might want to change the how errors are displayed. Same thing with if it's, you know, development environment, you might want to use Xdebug. Here's PHP INI for the FPM. You know, you can set the memory limits, you know, maybe even in production, you're going to set the max file upload size, you want to change it. So you can do that here. The only thing that I didn't, I did uncomment here are the FPM. These are all in the FPM INI file for the PHP. I'm setting the certificate file so you can actually see the certs that are there. And before we move on from PHP, you know, again, we're installing PHP 8.3. There is this PHP underscore all, you know, to be honest, this repo has been around for a while. At one point I was building an instance that I wanted all the PHP versions in and I could swap between them all. So you can see like I'm installing 5.6, 7.0, and all the versions 7.1, I think all the way up to, let's see what the last one is, maybe 8.1. So 8.1 is the very last one. My goal is to split these all out and make individual files so that you can kind of target individual um, PHP versions. But in a pinch, if you had to run PHP underscore all, you could probably dump all the PHP versions into your kind of instance. And then if we follow along, you know, again, no surprises here. Composer, Composer is exactly the same commands that I ran manually previously. Uh, Node, exactly the same thing. Redis, SQLite, MySQL. So there is a little bit of difference here because I wanted to automate things and it's a little, I'd say it's probably a little fragile. Um, but here at the very top, you can see installing MySQL server. We're using that DB root password from our config file. And here's where I think this thing becomes fragile. If you recall, we ran this command, MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. And we answered questions and we typed in answers. We're using expect here. So what expect does is it looks for a string. And when it sees this string, it sends this response. And then when it sees the next string, it sends this next response. And this becomes fragile because if this script ever gets modified and maybe they change the order of these things or they change the spelling or they wanna make something more clear and they just change the verbiage, then this will break. So just be aware of that in the future. You may have to come in here and tweak that. Install the cert bot. Again, this is the same code that we did last time. The one command line there. And again, this is an old code base that I'm kind of reusing. I tried to leave some of these old applications in here, but I just commented them out. So if you needed Apache or Memcache or Beanstalk, uh, Mailhog, Rock, Postfix. So those are all here. You can install them individually. Just uncomment that code and they'll be installed in your instance. One final upgrade check. We start doing some cleanup. Here's where we create that swap space. So we're, we're doing the swap space. And then this is the final status report. And then we're all done. So that's the provisioning script. No surprises in there. That's everything that we did manually the last time. We actually typed in every single command, but now it's a single command. So infrastructure is a code for the win.